Good evening tonight. Thank you that you're here. Thank you that you're with us on Facebook. Uh, we appreciate it. God bless you. Glad you took the time. And we're going to go over tonight uh, a portion in Romans 9 that um, some people will find offensive if you don't know the Lord. You know, and, and, and we know that um, in this world, people get very, very, very offended at God. People get very, very offended at the name of Jesus. The only name that can save is the really the only name that offends so much. God bless you. And we don't like it when, when God tells us things are a certain way. Or maybe that they're only one way. It's a wonder of wonders that God gave us a Savior. It's absolutely awe-inspiring. There's nothing greater on earth than that God gave us a Savior. But the proud hearts of men don't like that there's only one way. They get so offended. You mean to tell me in this day, this enlightened day and age, that there's only one way? That's the wrong question. The, the wonder of wonders is that there is a way. And it's only by His grace and His mercy that He's given us a way out. And we're going to go over another portion here in Romans chapter 9 that offends. It offends the proud hearts of men. And we'll check it out. In Romans chapter 9, starting in verse 14. And it deals with God's sovereignty. Is God sovereign? on this earth. Do you believe that? Is God sovereign? Does he have the right to do what he wants to do? Is he in charge? And men don't like that. Men, mankind, man, woman, we don't like that. But to those of us who have he, that he has uh, saved and redeemed and humbled and that will come to him in repentance and we don't we understand that. He's in charge. We fall on our knees and, and, and try to be obedient. His ways aren't our, our ways. His ways are so much more loftier than our ways. And we don't understand. But these verses can offend. Check it out. And in verse 14, Paul says, What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Certainly not. He says, that's crazy. We're, 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 they're having a discussion now on the doctrine of election. And of course, every time you, we have this doctrine of election, can God save anyone? Well, yes. But then they always balance that with everybody has free will. You can choose to say no to God if you want to. He didn't make robots. It's his heart that he wants to save everyone. And people have a hard time with this. That uh, God, that if God is sovereign, then if he could save everyone, why doesn't he? And they spin themselves into circles. But he's given everyone the chance to be saved. It's his heart that none should perish. And those of us who are here tonight that know him, we simply say thank you. Thank you, Lord. By the grace of God, I'm saved. I'm no better than anybody else. I don't deserve it. It is utterly a free gift. And certainly not. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. And the proud hearts of men hate that verse. Hate that verse. You mean to tell me that God's going to have mercy on whom he wants to have mercy? 
What do you mean? He just picks and chooses? And the proud hearts of men want so much to believe that they have something to do with it. That God just doesn't forgive. You've got to do more than that. That you didn't just say you're sorry and, and you ask him to come into your heart. This is a real stumbling block for, for our people. And, 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 and they get so offended over that verse. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whomever I have compassion. Who's he got compassion for? Who's he got mercy for? Uh, maybe we could go with everyone. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, anyone, doesn't matter, male, female, color, race, wherever you live, your social status, anyone, whosoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He has worked it out. He has given up his son so that none should perish. No, not one. And so he goes on, Paul goes on further in verse 16 and says, so that it's not of him who wills, nor of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. It's not uh, because of human will or, or desire, so to speak, that that God will forgive. And it's not how you run the race. It's not your works. Your effort can't save you. But, but of God who shows mercy. And the proud hearts of men want so much to believe that they have something to do with it. And let, it, it's a good time just to read Ephesians 2.8. And through 10. And you don't have to turn there if you don't want to. But uh, for God lays it out so clearly here for us. For by grace you have been saved through faith. That not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Not of works. Lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. For good works which he has prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. There's nothing we can do. We're saved through faith. And it's not of ourselves. Our human effort won't do it. But at the same time, God, we're saved by the grace of God. He's elected to save us. But we exercise free will to accept the free gift. And men will put, turn themselves around and spin themselves down a rabbit hole here to, to make that balance. But at the same time, we have those things going on, but his ways aren't our ways, are they? We can't possibly understand everything that God says. Our wisdom is a few grains of sand on a beach. And his wisdom is the entire beach. Every grain of sand on it on an endless speech. If we could understand everything that he talks about and how he balances the doctrine of election against free will, if we knew everything God knows, knew, then we'd be God. That's not possible. One day, we're going to understand this far more completely. But right now, it can seem a little tricky for us. But... <clears throat> He goes on, but it's the God who shows mercy. The God that gave up his son that you and I could be saved. And many, many, many people will never come to him because they don't like it. They don't like the way he's doing it. They're offended. They feel like it has to have something to do with them. And realistically, it's most of the people on the earth will never, ever come to him. In verse 17, he says this, For the scripture says to Pharaoh, he gives a lesson with two people, 
about, about free will and the doctrine of election. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, for this very purpose I have raised you up, that I may show my power in you, and that my name may be declared in all the earth. He's going to use Pharaoh, just like he uses many people in the Bible. Do you have to be a believer for God to use you? No. He'll, he'll, he'll use lots of uh, kings and, and, and people that uh, don't know him, don't love him, won't receive him, but he'll use him uh, to make a point that we still talk about today. That my, you know, that my power in you and my name uh, may be declared in all the earth. So he uses all those plagues and all the power and all the wrath that he poured out on, onto Egypt for his glory. That we still talk about it today. And at every step of the way, did Pharaoh have an opportunity to come to him? How many plagues did he send? Right? He sent ten plagues. Couldn't after the first couple, Pharaoh have said, you know something? I'm Pharaoh of Egypt, and I think I'm in charge, but I'm not. And I'm going to submit to you, Lord. I'm going to come under your authority. But he never did. He never did. God gave him every opportunity. God preserved him. God didn't take him out. To his dying breath, he could have come in, in, to, the, to the one true God, but he didn't. Therefore, he has mercy, in verse 18, therefore, he has mercy, mercy on whom he wills, and on whom he wills, he hardens. Now, the scripture tells us that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. And, but we know that since Adam, everybody's heart is hard. Everyone's got a hard heart. From the moment we are born, um, all we know how to do is, is really go against God. We have to be constantly trained to do good. We have to be trained to do right. The sin pours through our veins. It's what we do. We cleave to the dust. We know this. Our hearts are hard. Every heart. And that's what we're up against. But who is it? And not all will be saved. But what's it say in Romans 10, 13? If we just went one more page over, whosoever who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever. That's better than if it said your name in there. Because that, there might be another person by your name. But whosoever is anyone who calls on the name of the Lord can be saved. There is forgiveness for anyone. Anybody who chooses to. If you're not saved tonight, if you don't have a relationship with God tonight, it's because you've chosen not to. And we hope that your heart has been prepared and we hope that you'll receive the Lord tonight. You will have an opportunity to receive the Lord tonight, accept His mercy, accept His forgiveness. Be the greatest day of your life. Nothing beats being forgiven. Nothing. But by the same token, many won't come to Him. Therefore, He has mercy on whom He wills, and on whom He wills, He hardens. And you will say to me, and so Paul's making a question. Here's the question you're going to ask me. You'll say to me then, then why does He find fault with me? If, if, uh, for if He's hardened me, who, who, who can resist His will? But the Lord's made it so that none should perish. That's His heart. And every single one of us was born with a hard heart in a sense. We didn't know him. We were, we were rebellious against God. We didn't have to come to him. We went a, long, a lot of years without coming to him. But by his grace, we sit here tonight redeemed because 
You did come to him. You didn't stay with a hard heart. Somebody shared the gospel, or you heard it on the radio, or you heard it on a message, or you listened to a tape, and, 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 and it melted your heart, and you said, Lord, I want to know you. I need you. And that's all it takes. And men have a big problem with that. That that's all it takes. You mean to tell me that's it? It's that easy to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and all your sins will be forgiven. Yep, every one. Every sin. Even the horrible ones. Every one. And I was saying here, uh, why aren't you saved then if it's that easy? Why are most of the earth going to perish if it's that easy? And the thing is, because it's that easy, because the Lord has made it that easy, that you just, he's paid every price that you can't pay. He's done it all, and all you have to do is receive a free gift. Because it's that easy, that's what makes it so hard. If he told you, listen, you have to try to climb the highest mountain, and then you're going to earn your salvation, you'd try it. If you told you you had to crawl on your hands and knees to Cape Cod, you'd try it until you collapsed at the Bourne Bridge. And if you limped around the rest of your life because of your broken knees, you'd say, I earned my salvation. But because he, he extends a hand and says, this grace is free, my son died. I killed my son for you. I let him pound nails into my son for you so you don't have to bear the cross. Well, then it's too easy. Just, you got to choose to perish. You got to choose to perish. Anybody who perishes, they chose to. <clears throat> and they, Apostle Paul goes on talking about this very thing, but he, about, about that. But indeed, O oh man, who are you to reply against God? Will the thing that is formed say to him who formed it, why have you made me like this? Does not the potter have power over the clay from the same lump to make one vessel for honor and another one for dishonor or a common vessel? And he's talking about God's sovereignty. God has reached out to save everyone, but only some will receive it. This is why we share the gospel. This is why in every family, forget countries all over the world, there are people we know and love who are not saved, have up to this point in their life, have been unwilling to accept the grace of God. As we did it at one time, but we keep going, we keep trying to set an example, we keep extending a hand, we try to encourage them, until their dying breath, the Lord is showering them with grace. I'll still save you, I'll still reach out my hand. Come and accept the Lord, come and accept me. Till the, day, the very last breath, he gives you an opportunity. That's his heart, that's his grace. We don't have anything to complain about. Even though, oh, it offends the hearts of men that, that they don't, God doesn't, isn't willing to save anybody or seemingly won't save anybody when he steps his heart and that they don't have anything to do with it. That it's all God. Because we can't do anything with our sin. We can try to do good, but it doesn't do anything about getting rid of our sin. We've done it. It's there. It's in the bank. Only God can forgive it. And he will. And so, does not the potter have power over the clay? I, God created you. Who's in charge? God created everything. By right of creation, it's all his. By right of creation, he has the right to do how what he wants. And, but we know what he wants. He has a heart to love us. He has a heart to forgive us. He'll pay any price. Any price that you'll be with him forever. And you've got to choose not to accept that. And by right of creation, he, 
he has the right to do everything with us. And that since Adam, we've all rebelled. And that he would save one of us is an incredible mercy. One of us and all of mankind is incredible mercy. But he's willing to save us all. Saved everyone here. Saved so many people in the world. And he'll save them all if they'll do it, if they'll just accept it. That's his heart. And some people will never balance the fact that, well, there's a doctrine of election. God can save. But then there's a doctrine of free will. He goes on. Apostle Paul goes on. What if God, wanting to show his wrath, to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath, prepared for destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. Well, we just spoke about that. We'll take, break it down to a lesson of two. We have a vessel of wrath that they've been talking about Pharaoh. He poured out his wrath on, on Egypt and to let his people go, to show what he can do for his people, how he'll free them. And he poured out his wrath on Jesus Christ to free his people now. And, but, so Pharaoh is a vessel of wrath. But there's this long suffering. He didn't take everybody out. He hasn't taken everybody out of this world that, that won't, when it mocks him, that doesn't believe in him. That was me at one time. He didn't say, you know, every, all of you are all done. No. He's long suffering. He's patient that none should perish. That none should perish. He waited. He let Pharaoh live. Pharaoh could accept him to his dying breath. And, but he, he, is a, he is a vessel of wrath, whereas Moses is a vessel of, of mercy. The, why is Moses chosen by God? Why is Moses a, a vessel of mercy? Is it because he's a great guy? Well, he's a murderer, if you recall. Moses didn't like the way that Egyptian was mouthing off about his people, so he killed him and buried him in the sand. It, we're not vessels of mercy that have received this mercy because of anything we've done. Moses is a murderer. He's, he's received his mercy. We'll talk to him in heaven as he'll, he'll want to talk to us on what we went through. He's a murderer. Any sin can be forgiven. David was an adulterer and a murderer. King David, man after God's own heart. It's not that we are saved because we're goody two-shoes or any saint that's gone before us was saved because they're something special. They're saved because God's a God of mercy that none should perish. And then God uses them for his glory. Which, by the way, he had prepared beforehand. Just like he's got tasks and things for you to do right now. That, until the day he calls you home. That he's had prepared for you beforehand. It's an awesome privilege to be in the Lord's service, isn't it? Every day he moves you around as he sees fit. Every day we make our plans and it's good to give them to the Lord. Now what do you say, Lord? Here's what I got to do today. How do you want it done? And he'll move us along. Verse 24. Even, you know, he's prepared beforehand for glory. Even us, who we, even us whom he called not of the Jews only, but of the Gentiles. I mean, back then the Jews thought God was all for themselves. And even in the early stages after Jesus, even the believers thought Jesus was just for the Jews. Until the Apostle Paul came along and showed them, hold on, Lord Jesus offers forgiveness to everyone. And they had to learn about this great salvation. It's amazing. You know, this offends people. And I'm... I want to just read a verse. You have to turn there. Acts chapter 4. In verse 10. 10 through 12. 
want to talk about another verse that offends. Let it be known to you all, to all the people of Israel, that the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, talking to the religious crowd, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, who have become the chief cornerstone. And unfortunately, most of the population on this earth is rejecting the chief, chief cornerstone. They're rejecting Jesus. He goes on, nor is there salvation in any of them, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And that verse offends. But it's just the fact. The proud hearts of men don't want to be told that there's one way. It's a wonder of wonders there is a way. But the proud hearts of men, when you tell them there, 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 there's only one way to salvation, boy, try that at the party and you'll get a reaction. But it's the wrong question, as we said earlier. It's a wrong way of thinking. God didn't have to save any of us. We're dead in our sins. By His grace, He'll save everyone. He'll just come to Him. Come to Him and admit they've fallen short. I don't know what's there to even admit. All have fallen short of the glory of God. Every one of us. You know, There is a way to be saved. And people who say, well, he could have saved everybody because he's God. Doctrine of election. Well, he's reached out to save everybody. And I just want to read a couple things I wrote down to close it with on what he's done to make sure you're saved. On what he's done, and he'll save you tonight if you're watching or if you're listening to this. He loves you. He cares for you. And he did it with action. A lot of big people may tell you, hey, I love you. And it goes that far. They throw an I love you around like an I like you. When God said he loves you, he means it. And he did this to show you that he loves you. Couldn't do any more. He put action to it. He's the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. There'll never be another lamb that needs to be slain. God's always had a plan to save you, and it's Jesus Christ, him slain. He left glory. Imagine that. Would you leave glory to save something so much lesser? Would you? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have been together before eternity started. For existence started, and he left them to go through this life. He's born of Mary. Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, is in a belly. He's the one that comes sliding out in the pain of childbirth. God does that because he loves you. He's the one that lived as a man with all the pains we have. Imagine God doing that, all the aches and pains and details and private matters we have to do. He did every one of them. He did every one of them so that he could live a perfect life and save you. This is his heart. Don't let anybody say, uh, you know, oh, well, he could save anybody. He's done it all to save anybody. He veiled his glory and just worked as a man, just like you or we go through life. At the proper time he started his ministry, the lame walked, the blind see, the lepers were cleansed. He healed them all at no charge. At no charge. As many that came to him, he healed, he fed. He showed the heart of God that none should perish. None should perish. Come to him tonight. He's done it in action. He's done all things, these things to prove and show you, you know something, he does love me. 
He washed the feet of his disciples to show what service is. Show how we're going to go out and save others. He washed the feet of his betrayer. Think about that. Ever been betrayed? This guy is going to betray him with a kiss. He washed his feet. He called him friend just hours before he betrayed him. And even Judas could have been saved if he knew him. He'd have forgiven even that. And he'd be in heaven with us. But he didn't. He would never really come to him. He sweat drops of blood in the garden for you in his anguish. He sweat giant drops of blood for you. He carried his own cross. He was beaten. He was whipped. He was punched. He was spit on. He was mocked. He was humiliated. They placed a crown of thorns on his head. And he was nailed while he was alive to the cross. Does he love you? Does he love you? It can be sad going through this, but he wrote it in blood how much he loves you. His heart is that none should perish. No, not one. He's the one that was buried. He's the one that descended into death. Descended into death. He's the one that stole the, the keys from hell, and he's the one that rose again. He loves you. He loves you, he loves you, he loves you. And exercise your free will. He's done everything so that you could be saved. Everything. He's paid every price. He's borne every burden. You just need to come to him. Ask him to forgive you and let him love you. Do that tonight. I'm going to give you an opportunity right now. Amen? Amen. Father, we love you. Lord, we thank you. Oh, you are, the, you are a sovereign God. You got every right to do whatever you want to do, Lord. And what you chose to do is to offer salvation to anyone who would have it. Anyone. You're not too lost. You're not too far gone. You may say, oh, I'm a great sinner. God doesn't want me. Well, I'll show you a great Savior. Come to him now. Come to him now. Accept him now. Let him forgive you. Let him love you. Let him build a new life for you. He's got a purpose. He's got a plan for you that he's already prepared. Receive it. Receive the gift. Simply say something like this. Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. And I ask you to forgive me. Come into my heart and live. I want to know you. I want a life with you. And if you said that, God bless you. Strap yourself in. <laughs> Wait and see what the Lord's going to do. And if you said that and don't, you know, accepting the Lord for the first time and you don't have a Bible, we want to make sure you get one. You can drop us a line at Crossroad Christian Church. 15 Lynn Street, Peabody, Massachusetts. And we'll make sure you get a Bible and some information and come on down. Sunday morning, 10.30, Wednesday at 7. And we'll fellowship together and go over the Word. God bless you. Thank you for joining us.